right, I want to show you now how to use the one and a half inch fan to do Baptist fans. Um, I have here a simulated eight inch border. Okay, so consider this the ditch, consider this the edge of the quilt. I'm going to choose to do these fans so they're upright. I could very well, if I wanted them to come out of the border down, I could flip the tool and do this, what I'm about to do in the opposite direction. It works either way. All right, so place it down the same way we did before. Line up your legs, pick your vertical line, whatever you want. If you have a straight line on your quilt, you want to do the edge of the fabric, your choice. You can always choose to quilt past that vertical line, that vertical edge line, so it's not really an issue. And like we talked before, remember, we're just spinning a circle, so there isn't really a top and a bottom of a circle. One of those, tr the tricks I decided, I d really don't like it when my grid tape hits my batting, because I can't slide the ruler. I tend to like to manipulate the ruler quick, so I just put a piece of fabric down there. All right. I'll start about here. Again, I'm simulating that this is a seam of a pieced quilt. So I'm putting this in the ditch, okay? I'm gonna line her up, because I'm actually gonna turn her on. And ditch her, whoops, ditch her with the machine on, which I didn't do perfect. Okay, hit the center of your circle, I mean of your slot, line up with the center and up you go. Now, on these curved rulers, there's a little give in here because as we turn, we had to accommodate more of the arc. So you could pull to the front or push to the back, your choice, but you might want to do one or the other. As you come out, just make sure you're hitting your previous line. Okay. Also, as we talked before, our feet are all slightly different sizes, so. We couldn't make it exactly a perfect fit for every machine. Okay, line up with the next slot. Up we go. Again, keep your hands close to that foot. I deviated there a little bit, but that's all right. Oh, I've heard others say it too, but I always say if I wanted a perfect, I'd turn on autopilot and let the computer do it. But that takes the fun out of it. Okay, now if I could stop here and start my next row, but if I wanted to fill up more of this eight inch border, I'd probably do one more. So this is where, again, I have to move the template a little bit to get it out of the way so I could get past that long leg. Put the long leg back down on the seam, check my spacing, make sure I'm in the middle of them, and go. All right, stop, move it, go again. So you can see how easy this is. And it's fun, you get a very dramatic, whoops, I just did that, don't mind that. That's some bad stitching in the ditch, see? Okay, go up your chute, tap the back of the previous one, come on down. Go up, touch the back and come on down.
if you have a roller foot for your machine, this is where it's nice. Because notice how I'm running the template a lot on the back of the foot. So there's a little more chatter, but it's manageable. This is not my ruler foot. This is my standard foot. So it's very manageable, but it would be a little nicer if I had the ruler foot on. Okay, go down the ditch and put her back on there. Check my spacing because I moved it. So I got to check my spacing. Come on back a little bit and go again and do the last leg. And there you have it. So you could see how fun it would be to just keep on going and build them right down the border. So this one and a half inch one hits an eight inch border very nicely, just as a reference. I could have gone smaller. If I had a six, I might just stop an iteration sooner and so forth. I think you can envision how we would just do the exact same thing if we wanted a two inch spacing. We would use the two inch. We could use either one. Probably what would decide for me which one I used would be based on how big my border was. If I needed this one, because this one goes up to a 20 inch diameter or a 10 inch. So this means this one would clearly hit a nice 10 inch border. You could probably even go 11 inch border with this one. Versus this one, since the, the outside is 18 inches, you'd be, you could do a 10, but just know you'd be about an inch shy right? Because 10, 18 inches is a 9 inch radius, so you would come within about an inch of the top of the block if you, it was a 10 inch block. So decide which one you want. If you wanted 1 inch spacing, then you would need both of them. You would do as we did before with the cross hatching. You'd use the first one, and then you would put down the second one and get the slots in between. So that's why we call this one, our, this is our fan, two inch fan odd radiuses. This is our two inch fan, the even radiuses. Not to be confused with these numbers though that are diameters because both of them are even numbers. I have one more thing to show you. I want to show you how to stack uh, fans to make a filler. Now you could do this very small. Like with the one inches, you could do one inch spacing and very small spaces, or this is with two. You could do it very large and very dramatic. But I want to show you how to put in the second row. We just demonstrated how to do the first row, and I know you can see that. So then I went ahead and got a head start on the second row. I placed one, but let's do the next one. Okay, so what I would be doing is placing my corner right here. Then I would put her down, okay? Now, notice I don't have enough ruler to touch the back of these, so that's okay. Rotate it. This is what we talked about earlier. It's a circle, so there's no top and bottom, right? So you can rotate this on this foot all day and get the same result, okay? The same shapes, the same circles. So I need to get to my starting place, and I need to find it. So I go ahead and I rotate this around and I grab my marker, whatever type you prefer, and I just mark these approximate places where I'm gonna hit that back. Just gives me a little quick head start, okay? It is also okay, and I have done this too. I don't always do it, but I'm gonna move this out of the way for a minute. I could, if I wanted for extra reference, mark this pivot point. Like mark right here where it taps this seam and maybe mark where it hits this seam, just as a reference point in case you pick that ruler up. You, will, you can just see it quickly with your eye. I need to stitch in the ditch down to my first point. Mike here, who's helping me make this video, is uh, also helping me with my skill level. That was one-handed stitch in the ditch <laughs> because he is standing so close with the camera. <laughs> But that's a good thing. Okay, so there we are. Line up that ruler, okay? If I lined it up too close down here, notice what happens. My arc up here on the top side is short. I'm not going to hit the back. So when possible, I kind of watch them both. I want to make sure I have enough arc up here to do my full blade here. Okay, off we go. Touch the back. Come on down. If I move it, just move it back. Just stitch in the ditch. Whoops, down your thing. 
Okay, go to your next place, so I'm gonna have to move it. Sometimes, if you don't want to get into the, um, take the extra time to reposition the entire template every time, this works. Put your finger here, rotate her up. Stitch down your ditch. Oops, to your next place. With two hands, it's a little easier. Rotate her back. That's where if I had the little arc, you could see why it would help me, because I rotated it back. Check my previous stitching lines like we did before and go up. Notice I need to come over about a stitch from where I drew my chalk line to get that one positioned right, okay? And up I go. Okay, now look what happens. This doesn't always happen, and I'm sure this is because somewhere along the way I slip the ruler or I have something out of line. I don't know what it is, but it happens. So when you need a little more arc, put your finger back down here, swivel your ruler, keep a little bit of an eye on there, pick up a little more arc. Oops, I need a little more. I didn't go far enough. And then come on back. We contemplated making the rulers bigger in case we do slip it, but then we realized how big is too big. I mean, we, there are so many different situations, we couldn't hit them all. So we decided, well, let's leave it this size. It's more manageable. The bigger we got, again, the a little bit harder to manage, and also they charge us more money for the acrylic. Okay, down we come. See, I pivoted it again back on this point. And up I go. See, this time I have enough arc. I don't have to move it. I just tap, come on back. Okay, I'm gonna have to move it because I gotta get over to here. Give it up. Oops, a little sloppy there. Pivot it back. And go again. Now I gotta hold, this outer one is the one you gotta hold the most because it's the, it tends to bounce the most. It's the longest leg that the least amount of support. Tap, and then come on back. Now, in this example, I didn't use the outest, the outside arc, okay? Um, so we're done at this point. But if you start using it, just a hint, say you, you went ahead and used this arc on your first one, you have to use it on all of them or you will throw it off. You can't, once you start with however many spaces, slots you decide, you need to stick with it, okay? You can't do a little mid-course design change. It will throw off your uh, fans. But as you can see, this is pretty easy. Now, just slap it down and go again. Okay, that was a quick demo of how you could do curved cross hatching or Baptist fans with our curved rulers. There are so many things. I'm having a good time just coming up with different things and I hope you will too. Do send me feedback. If you come up with a great use or a great idea for our curved rulers, we'd love to see it. And or if you have ideas on how we can improve these rulers. We make these for you guys and you're the experts. So tell us, send us your feedback and we certainly listen. Thank you.